You know, joining us today all the way from Scotland is Kapil Sishashai. He is a protest singer-songwriter. And tell us about yourself, how you got into music. Yeah, I'm a protest singer-songwriter based here in Glasgow in the uh, west of Scotland. Um, I've been around music my whole life. There were Indian classical singers singing Carnatic music in my family that I experienced from a young age, practicing, rehearsing, performing. And from that point onwards, I knew I wanted to play music too. And growing up in the west, obviously there wasn't as much Indian classical music or South Asian people I could play music with. So I grew up with a lot of Western rock music took into playing in bands and things as a teenager. But then in my mid-twenties onwards, I started to feel a real need to tackle specific issues to do with my own identity as a South Asian person in my music. I um, started singing about issues like caste system, controversial as that is, but it's important that we talk about these issues. So I released a concept album about the Indian caste system in 2018 called A Sacred Boar. It's been featured by Rolling Stone India, Vice, The Guardian, Pitchfork. I've toured to Canada, Germany. I've played to festivals like Latitude Festival, South by Southwest. So managed to take the message of that album quite far. And then stylistically, that album, it was quite an experimental kind of avant-garde kind of rock album. A lot of, a lot of guitar playing, weird electronic textures, but I recently pivoted to a more r and influenced sound, a lot of um, synthesizers, a lot of 808 sounding drum machines and mm -hmm. hyper pop sending synth textures. And the follow up to that album, Lal, will be out on the 18th of November. Congratulations on release of 370. I'm really happy that song's finally come out. Thank you. So 370 is a song about the ongoing conflict in Kashmir that's happening at the moment. And Article 370 is to do with the legislation regarding Kashmir's special status and how you know, it's a very ambiguous conflict depending, you know, regardless of where you stand on what the Indian government's doing, what the Pakistani government are doing. There's a lot of extremist groups in the country. And I felt really frustrated by two things. The two that like, you know, the first thing being that I feel that any conflict out there is only as important to people as its social media marketing is. Like everyone in the world is talking about Ukraine. Everyone in the world was talking about, you know, like any given shooting in America, any of these conflicts, these tragedies, they're all equally important. But I find that some tragedies are spoken about for months and months and months on end, but there are tragedies like Kashmir that are just forgotten about altogether. Like the internet was cut off, all communication was cut off in Kashmir back in August or something of 2019. Really disappoints me and shocks me that places like Kashmir are just completely forgotten when it comes to consciousness. Yeah, rupture of the wheel, wow. Would you maybe say anything very, very distinctive that stands out to you? My uh, favorite part of the song is probably the, the the intro because the melody in the intro references the melody from the national anthem. It doesn't rip it off for copyright reasons, but it's very, it references the musical intervals. So anyone who listens to Rupture of the Wheel, the intro kind of like, kind of enc like encourages them to keep listening by that kind of sense of nostalgia. Mm. Oh, this song's got the national anthem in it. It's a pro-nationalist kind <laughs> of anthem. And I had to go and correct them and be like, no, no, it's very much the opposite of that. Yeah, I think in terms of anecdotes, that's probably my favourite aspect of the song. It's got loads of different elements to it. Before we go, if you have a short message for all the listeners of Red Indie Shuffle Northeast Edit. Support your local radio stations because a band that are only on indie stations today might be a band that are filling stadiums tomorrow. And uh, without these indie stations, Artists who don't start off with loads of advantages don't get to where they deserve to be. 93.5 Red FM. It's rocking. <laughs>